Peace, boys. Let's get to it today. We're getting busy. Back to work on the derby. Also got some new stuff to do to the stroker. Um, I showed you guys in a couple videos ago that I got a new Polini clutch, adjustable clutch for this thing now. So it's time to do some tuning on the uh, the stroker piece. So gonna be throwing some parts on the stroker. We're gonna finish painting up this derby, get this front bearing, hopefully back on the bike right now. I primered the front piece last time. I let it dry overnight and I sanded it and uh, came back. So now she's smooth as butter right now. That's with the primer on and then lightly sanded. The point of the primer is to fill in all the imperfections and get it smooth and uh, it's smooth as can be right now. Before this video even starts, I need you guys to smash that like button. A lot of you people are watching the videos, but you're not hitting that like button. Come on now. And also, I got some exclusive stuff dropping right now as you're watching this video. Some super, super hot boy exclusive dropped right now as you guys are watching this video. Make sure you guys go check the description for this. This is no joke, probably the sickest sticker I've ever made. And uh, I already slapped one on the whip up there. As you can see it, this is like the ideal like slap sticker. We got Mop Boys scooter culture right here. Threw on the JDM look since it's a slap sticker, classic JDM. And as you can see in the background, we got some hot babes back there. If you guys want to support the channel, grab a sticker in the description down below. Check it out. And uh, yeah, let's get to it, boy. All right, forget whatever you know about spray paint because this Krylon stuff, I think I did find the problem. If you've been following along with this derby build and this derby paint job, you know I've been talking about these issues of these plastics and how they've been giving me so many issues spray painting them. Well, um, I was before like sanding them all the way down, primering them, sanding them again, coating them in black about three coats, wet sanding the black, uh, clear coating, and in between each paint like primer, in between the black paint, in between clear coat, I was letting it dry for multiple days. Every time I'd come to spray the paint on the next time, it would just like bubble up and do all this funky stuff. Then I painted this piece with zero prep, no sanding, no cleaning, painted it black, primered, primered it, painted it black, and then instantly clear coated it. Like, it looks super fire, except for the texture, because I didn't sand it. Well, I just did it to this piece, and look how perfect this came out. Obviously, this paint's backwards from any other paint I've ever used. I painted it black, and then instantly came back with the clear coat to hit it with a wet coat. And look at that, bro. That's literally glass. It's like a mirror, I don't even want to touch it, but like, Bro, what? paint does not like to dry between coats, obviously, because when it would dry, it would bubble up. It's like once it dries, it like loses a chemical or something. I don't even know. Stroker piece, new Polini adjustable clutch. All right, so if you don't know, now you know. So we got the 2000 center spring and we got the Polini adjustable clutch. Man, I'm sorry for this wind noise. I got this fan cranking. A Polini adjustable clutch comes to set the springs. I go ahead and throw this clutch in now and a new center springs. I think my center spring is for sure dead by now. Also probably gonna down jet the car because I was having those issues last time. Because you have to take the center stand off because of the big exhaust pipe on this thing and it rattles on the exhaust pipe. It doesn't have like that rubber mount like some pipes do. Um, I decided to get a side stand, but the only thing is this side stand not really too stoked on it, I'm gonna be honest. You have to drill into the bottom of your frame down here, which isn't really a big deal, but I just don't like where it mounts because when it mounts up, it was hitting my kicker case when it comes up. So, kind of lame. I'm thinking I'm gonna cut it right there and uh, just weld it to the frame right here so it's a little bit farther up. Otherwise, it'd be like right back here. Kind of a weird spot to me. The one Chuck has is exactly the same as this and it's like a round clamp that goes around this frame right here and it clamps around it. That's the one I wish I had. Usually I have to run these washers to push my kicker case out far enough. As you can tell, it still rubs, but uh, this thing's awfully thick though. That's kind of scary, but uh, that'll go on here and space out my kicker case. I don't have to run those washers in there no more. Look at this, it's still on there drawing. Look how perfect this area came out. Perfect, and then look how foggy it is. So foggy right here, because when I'd spray, I get this part super dialed. Look at that, bro, it's like a, man, foggy. Because it would spray here and overspray here. And then I'd spray this part and it'd overspray here. Like, I couldn't get it. it. Looks all right for what I'm going for. This thing's gonna look so good when it's all put back together. Might have to wait a couple days and try clearing that again, though. Well, boys, I think I found part of my problem. These are like the variator plate holder things. They go right here. Look at that. Wow. Well that kind of put the stroker on hold a bit. It's missing a whole half. It's nowhere in the case 
and it wasn't in here at all. So, dude, that's crazy right there. I felt it happen too, because my right after Juan wrote it, and I hopped on it, I was like, what the hell is taking off super bad? And it was like not kicking in like it should. Get some new ones, but that makes this on hold. But I'm gonna go ahead and throw the clutch in with the new center spring while I'm while I have it all apart. But uh, that kind of sucks. The crank and crank seals is prime on this thing. Like no play, no play whatsoever in any direction, back and forth or up and down. And the seal looks prime still, so. We're selling everywhere else on the stroke. Check out the big upgrade. Using Chuck's actual socket. We usually use a crescent wrench and slam it on the ground. Spring. But look at how much taller this one is. New clutch spring, new clutch. You can actually adjust the clutch from right here with these Allens, so that's how you adjust it. But uh, she's in there, just setting it pretty much in here, just so I don't have to worry about putting anything away. All right, trying to put the derby all together. Doesn't look too bad. I gotta actually polish it a little bit right here. See where the fog is? That's where the clear coat got a little oversprayed in spots. But I feel like if I take a like microfiber to it and some polish, it'll come out good. But came out really solid. So stoked on that. Gonna throw the headlight in it and uh, go ahead and throw it in. So I saw people commenting in the last video about this steering stem and being confused on it. Um, some guy commented saying I was supposed to slide my stem and not cut it all the way up to here. I don't think he realizes how small this is compared to the stem. Look how big this is. You have about two inches of where it clamps on the stem. It can't go through here, bro. The keyboard mechanics that comment on these videos sometimes crack me up. You can tell in the comments who works on stuff and who doesn't just by how they talk about things. This headlight reminds me of like a car headlight. It's so big and bulky and it's just like mounts in the fairing. All right, about to pull her outside and get a real good look at her, but look how faded it is on the front for the, where the clear coat didn't lay right. So I'm definitely gonna come back, but I'm gonna wait a few days for it to really harden before I try clear coating again. I don't want to deal with this messing up again like it has. Because it was windy so I'd spray it and then it would like kind of miss this way and I couldn't, then I'd go back this way and it'd spray that way. So it's kind of a pain in the ass. All the other pieces that didn't paint in the wind were pretty good. Like that's, for spray paint, if I'm seeing a reflection, I'm gonna say that's pretty damn good. But all around, this thing has changed a bunch. I have a tail light figured out. I have a homie in Germany who's actually hooking me up right now. I found a spot that could sell them but I can only order it to Germany and he's able to, he's gonna send it to me from there. So super shout out to him. Hopefully in the next few videos, we'll get that on there and actually get a tail light on this situation. Also got that new pipe we're gonna be putting on boys and a few other things coming in right now for this thing. So um, I found out that my throttle situation was that 90 little piece and I ordered that and uh, yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this thing out. I gotta get a good picture of it right now with the sunset. I realize it has a leak in the exhaust too right here. It's a little crack in the weld and it's uh blowing out right there so new pipes that I go on ASAP that's for sure gonna find a new manifold for this since I think this is a restricted one looks like it man this bike's looking so good right now so stoked on this thing got a lot next time we'll throw on the variator and the new pipe and try messing with tuning it more because it runs really bad right now still but she'll start but like when you're high top end runs really bad This bike you can literally kick with your hand. I don't even know if these switches work. Oh, they do. The kill switch doesn't work. It's not plugged in right now, but even if it is, it still doesn't work. Tail light coming soon. That's gonna finish the back of the bike. I need to put the other front brake on too, because when he gave it to me, it didn't have a brake. Uh, a brake and I bought this cheap one. Eventually I'm gonna get those nice ones. I don't even remember what brand they are, but these black and red ones and they look sick. They look good on here, so. And then put the quick throttle on when I get that other throttle cable part. Things gonna look dialed. All right boys, well I think that's gonna do it for the derby today and also the stroker because I need to wait on those parts to show up. But I should have the stroker fixed this weekend. Probably gonna tune this thing and do a video on this thing with the Caplini clutch and uh, some more riding on that. And uh, maybe Chuck will bring his stroker too. We'll get some real stroker action. And then it's time to get to work on the Zuma. I didn't even get it running that good right now because I didn't want to mess with it. I'm gonna be throwing the pipe on tomorrow so I don't want to tune it. And then throw the new pipe on and have to retune the whole thing again. So I'm just gonna wait till tomorrow 
throw the pipe on, get this thing tuned, and then mess with that variator and see some speed in it. But uh, I'm gonna throw a keychain in three people's orders. Three random people are just gonna get a keychain thrown in if you order this weekend. I'm on the hunt for this battery cover right here. So if you live in a country that has these uh, derbies very often, let me know if you can get me a battery cover, please. I'll super hook you up with some Mopboys gear and I'll pay the shipping and everything. So that's gonna do it for this one. I'll see you guys in the next one.